now we have his holiness bhakti vigna vinashak narsingh swami maharaj with us so we welcome maharaj by chanting hari krishna maha mantra once hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare so hope all of you know about maharaj bhakti vigna vinashak narsingh swami maharaj i'll i'll speak about him few words bhakti vigna vinashak narsingh swami maharaj was initiated by shrila prabhupad in london 1990s 1971 a year later he received the second initiation he has been preaching for over last 25 years in asia countries now it is uh, more it's uh, long back so asia countries such as india philippines china taiwan singapore hong kong malaysia and thailand through his years of preaching he has given countless souls practical guidance and deep inspiration taking sanyasa in mayapur in 1994 from his holiness tamal krishna goswami maharaj okay so uh, uh, did not mean much much of a change in his lifestyle since maharaj has always been strict in his sadhana who ever gets to know maharaj admires and respects his sincere and faithful practice of chanting the holy names of the lord he truly walks his talk maharaj has been teaching with his with the mi since the beginning now also he is teaching and uh, we request maharaj to speak maharaj has been given a topic on uh, lord chaitanya's appearance and his childhood pastimes thank you maharaj uludhuni hare krishna thank you Thank you, Srinivas Gopal Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Bangla Bhaktura Kutujana Chekhane. Okay, Abna Sunte Pachan. FMA, FMA. Now show you, Nabbe number. And Hindi Bhaktura Kitna Loge Yapar? Hindi. Okay, Ap Log Sun Raya Na, Translation Me. Okay, Hare Krishna. uh chinese russians which which uh, frequency you are on 95 russian and chinese zoom na na those who are here how they will understand okay <laughs> okay chinese zoom uh, on zoom it is there you can connect online hari krishna हरे कृष्ण जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय घोर भक्त वृंद
Hare Krishna. Welcome everyone to Shravana Utsa for 2023. So this is the first day of Shravana Utsa. It's a nice opportunity for us to have more hearing and chanting, as the name implies. So this year they've given us topics. Previous years we were we were more free, we could select our own topic, but this year we've been told what topics they wanted us to speak on. And these topics are all taken from Chaitanya Charitamrita. As you could see, uh, Haladhar Maharaj, he was speaking from the first chapter of Adi Lila Chaitanya Charitamrita concerning the spiritual master. So I've been asked to speak about the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu along with his childhood pastimes. So I'm going to make an attempt to describe these pastimes. It's actually a very difficult task because the activities of the Lord are only understood by very pure-hearted souls. But still, Vrindavan Das Thakur and Krishna Das Kaviraj, they have kindly described the pastimes of the Lord in Chaitanya Bhagavat, Chaitanya Charitamrita. So with the help of the information which is given there, then I'm going to present some of the facts which have been recounted for us. Actually, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which Krishna Das Kaviraj wrote, he was guided with the help of the diaries of Shivananda Sen, oh, no, Marari Gupta, and Swarup Damodar. Marari Gupta had witnessed all of the childhood pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was such a, an intelligent person that he had the foresight to make notes and to keep a diary of the different events which took place concerning Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then of course later on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left Mayapur and he went to Jagannath Puri and there Swarup Damodar was his secretary and Swarup Damodar also kept notes on the later pastimes. So in Chaitanya Charitamrita, we have three sections. We have Adi Lila, Majya Lila, and Ancha Lila. Adi Lila describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in householder life. So the first 24 years, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in householder life. And then he took sannyas. So the Madhya Lila describes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's activities in traveling around South India, particularly. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, after he took sannyas, he did go to Jagannath Puri, but he didn't stay very long. And he left to travel around India, and particularly South India and he spent some six, six years traveling around India and then he came back to Jagannath Puri. So the final 18 years of his advent in this world were passed in Jagannath Puri. And those pastimes in Jagannath Puri, that is the Anchya Lila of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So those of you who are reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, you'll be familiar with all of this. Actually, it, it, uh, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada had said that in the future, people would learn Bengali just to understand the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It's such a wonderful literature. And Srila Prabhupada also describes it as the postgraduate study of the science of Krishna consciousness. 
we have the Bhagavad Gita, which is our introduction, and then the Srimad Bhagavatam is like graduate study, and Chaitanya Charitamrita, postgraduate study, because it's describing the most elevated topics of devotional service. It's also revealing to us the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is said, when Lord Krishna appeared, he brought with him a storehouse of love of God, but the contents were kept sealed. But then, 500 years ago, Lord Krishna came again in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he came along with his associates, the Panchatattva, and they bro broke open that storehouse of love of God. And they plundered the contents and distributed it to everyone without discrimination. And we're told that there was no scarcity in distributing the contents of love of God. Sometimes we may be thinking, oh, I, I don't want to share what I've got. I've got this mercy. I don't want to share it with anyone. But we learn from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and his associates that the more you distribute the mercy, the more you get the mercy. So that is the principle of Krishna consciousness. We want to distribute this message of Krishna. As Srila Prabhupada would often reply to people, when he went to the Western world, people would ask him, have you just simply come to the West only to get money to beg from us and to take your money back to India to build a temple? And Srila Prabhupada would tell them, I have not come to beg. I have come to give. This is Krishna consciousness. It is not begging, but it's giving. And you can see, we are trying to present this mood in all of our temples of ISKCON around the world, that we invite people to come. And we invite people, come and hear and chant, come and take prasadam, come and learn and everything is being given freely. So this is the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, distributing freely to everyone without discrimination. Young men, old men, women and children, black and white and yellow and red, whatever color of cloth or skin, for everyone, without discrimination. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message is so munificent that he gives it even to the animals. Even to the animals we also want to give the mercy. It is, it is said, even the dogs don't go hungry. You can see there's dogs around here in Mayapur and they're not going hungry. They get prasadam somehow. And when we go on parikrama also, then there's also distribution of prasadam and the dogs know also they're going to get prasadam too. So this is the mood of Krishna consciousness. So before the advent of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we saw that there was, first of all, the appearance of some great personalities who come to assist in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, there was, first of all, the appearance of very great personalities like Madhavendra Puri and Ishwara Puri, and Advaita Acharya, Jagannath Mishra, Satchimata, Srivas Pandit, these kind of people. 
or Pundarik, Vijaniti, people like that, they all came before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Just like before Lord Krishna comes, first of all, different personalities also came into the world to make arrangements for the appearance of the Lord. So similarly, before the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all of these great personalities advented into the world. And it was Sri Advaita Acharya who took on the role to personally call for the Lord to come into this world. Advaita Acharya had his residence. He had two residences. One is just down the road at the Yoga Peet, not far away from the Yoga Peet. And his other more prominent residence was at Shantipur, which is not very far away here from Mayapur. And so Shantipur was the residence of Advaita. And in the times of Advaita Acharya, at that time, the Ganga was flowing very near to his home. So Advaita Acharya is a very great personality, very magnanimous. Uh, he is actually considered to be the incarnation of Mahavishnu, or sometimes we will say Sadha Shiva. But although Ma Advaita Acharya was such a great soul, when he looked at the condition of the, the people in the, in the country, he thought, how can they ever be delivered? They're all so fallen. They're worshipping so many gods and goddesses for material benefit. They have not understood the value of the human life. They do not know what is pure devotion and they do not know who is the Supreme Lord over everyone. Advaita Acharya saw that the people were addicted to so many sinful activities. He thought, how can they ever be delivered? Although Advaita was such a great soul himself, he considered that I, can, I cannot deliver them. I'm not, I'm not able to deliver them myself. The Supreme Lord himself will have to come. And he thought how to invite the Lord to come. And then he studied scriptures and he realized that by offering Ganga water along with some toasty leaves to the lotus feet of Lord, Lord Sri Krishna becomes very pleased with that devotee. So in this way, Advaita Acharya took up the work. He was worshipping Lord Krishna and offering Ganga water and Tosi leaves at the lotus feet of the Lord. And at the same time, he was calling out to him, please, please come. Right? You have to call. Do you want Krishna to come? All of you, you also have to call. Call out. Oh, I don't think he'll come. If, he, if that's the best you can do, you, he'll never come. No. The, the Lord said he, he was sleeping in the spiritual world, but he heard the loud calling of Advaita Acharya, and he was calling him, Please come, please come. A bit better. You're doing better. You're trying. Thank you. <laughs> so anyway, that was Advaita Acharya's mood that he really, really called. Like, remember His Holiness Sachinand and Swami, when he does kirtan, he will plead with us that when you chant, chant from the heart, from the heart, let it be from the heart. So the same way Advaita Acharya, he called from the heart to the Lord that you please come. And in this way, 
it is said, Advaita Acharya, he got the attention of the Lord. And it was the cause of the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But it was not clear to Advaita that the Lord had come. Advaita was, he was not sure. He didn't know, has he actually come? Is he going to come? Advaita was worshipping and he was calling, but he didn't know, is he actually going to respond to my pleas? So it happened that near to Advaita Acharya's house, here in Mayapur, near to his second house, was the residence of Jagannath Mishra. And Jagannath Mishra was married to a woman called Satchimata. Jagannath Mishra was the son of Upendra Mishra. And he had come from Srihatta which is some distance away from Mayapur, but he had come from Srihatta to reside in Navadweep at the residence of Nilambar Chakravarti. Nilambar Chakravarti was a, a very learned astrologer and pundit. So Jagannath Mishra came to get some education from Nilambar Chakravarti. And it was at that time Jagannath Mishra met Sachimata. Sachimata was the daughter of Nilambar Chakravarti. Those of you who go out on Parikrama, you know when we go to Belpakur, we go to see the deity of Madangopal. And that deity of Madangopal at Belpakur. It is said that is the family deity of Nilambar Chakravarti and the, the descendants of Nilambar Chakravarti, they, con they continue the worship of the deity today. And actually the devotee who is worshipping the deity, he is the initiated disciple of Srila Jaipataka Swami Maharaj. And he is in this way, he is also, he's a descendant of Nalambar Chakravarti. And they are worshipping this deity of Madangopal since so many hundreds of years. So Jagannath Mishra married the daughter of Nalambar Chakravarti. Her name was Sachimata. And the couple were living there in Mayapur not far away from uh, our, where we are today, just down the road. And naturally, they wanted to have a child. But time after time, Sachimata had, she gave birth to a daughter, but the daughter would die at birth. Just immediately after the birth of the child, the child would die. And this happened, it said, Sachimata, in this way, she gave birth eight times, one after another. Each child died just after birth. However, after the eighth attempt, somehow the next child was born and he was a son. And that child was called Vishwarup. And that Vishwarup is the expansion of Lord Balaram. So he was the eldest son of Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata. Later on, that Vishwarup would leave home. He was, he was, well, he heard how his mother and father were arranging for his marriage and he was not inclined to married life. So he decided to go away from home, and he left home and took sannyas, never to return. So that was the elder brother of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Later on, we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also took sannyas, and at one point, he left home going to South India, and he told the devotees, I want to go and find my brother. 
I want to go and look for my brother. And eventually he, he went to Pandalpur and he heard how his brother Vishwarupa had left the body. As a, he'd taken sannyas and was given the name Shankaranya. And he took sannyas, he was in Pandalpur and he gave up, he left to go back to the spiritual world in Pandalpur. So that was the elder brother, of, the eldest son of Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata. But Sachi Mata, after giving birth to Vishwarup, then she had another son. And this son, of course, this is, is going to become Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Sachi Mata actually conceived the Lord. It was in the month of Mark, in the year 1485. 1485 was when she conceived the child in her womb. And she carried the child in her womb for some 14 months. Now usually when the woman conceives a child, she will give birth within 10 months. After, you know, 10 months, uh, that's as long, I mean, sometimes you hear women giving birth much earlier, prematurely, but we never hear of anybody giving birth after 10 months. But Sachimata, you know, in those days, there was no cesarean. There was none of these drugs to induce delivery and so on. Everything was done naturally. So Sachimata she carried the child in her womb for some 14 months. And the family were worried that such a long time she has not given birth yet. What is wrong? However, her father, Nilamba Chakrava, he said he was an astrologer. So he looked at the stars and then he saw that, oh, very soon, there's going to come a very auspicious constellation. In the very near future, there's going to be a very auspicious time to take birth. All of the planets will be in a very auspicious position. And this child who is in her womb, this child must be waiting for that auspicious time to take birth. So this was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he waited for that very auspicious time. And that's why he was in the womb for 14 months. And it was then that, so she conceived in the month of Mark, which is like January, February, and she actually gave birth in the month of Falgun which is when Gorpunima is, holy. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ke. So it was on this auspicious holy, on this day of uh, holy, when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made his advent into the world. And the day in which he appeared, it was not just the regular holy, but it was a very auspicious day because at that time there was a lunar eclipse. Now, when there's a lunar eclipse, the custom is that all the Hindu people will go and bathe in the Ganga and chant the holy name. Hare Krishna! We actually had one uh, Gorpunima festival. It was, it was many years ago now. It must have been like more than 30 years ago. We had the Gorpunima here and there was a lunar eclipse in the evening on the Gorpunima day. And all the devotees from the temple, we all went to the Ganga and we all took our bath. And we were all chanting Hare Krishna for the 
time of the eclipse. So similarly, more than 500 years ago, 1486, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu made his appearance in this world in the month of Falgun, on the holy day, on the auspicious day of Purnima. And uh, at that time, all the devotees were chanting the holy name. They were all joyful. And even the Mohammedan people, they were also chanting the holy name because they were mimicking the Hindus. You know, when we chant, the, the Mohammedan people often mimic, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. They like to mimic us, they laugh about us, but they also chant. So, this was the auspicious time in which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advented in this world. At the time when everyone was chanting the holy name. So this was like the, the sign, a, 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 a indication of what Mahaprabhu, this child is going to do in the future. Nilambar Chakravarti Thakur, with the birth of the child, he performed, he drew up the chart of the child and he could understand that certainly this child is going to be a very great personality and perform many wonderful activities. Of course, he could not exactly predict exactly what he's going to do, but he could understand from the chart that certainly he's a very, very great personality. And if you look in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can see that in, in one of the purports, Srila Prabhupada has given us the astrological chart of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And just simply from the chart, from looking at the positions of the planets and the stars, then it's very clear that this personality is actually Swayam Bhagavan, that he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, that no other person could take birth at such a particular time in such a place other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his birth on the in, in here in Mayapur on this auspicious day of Purnima, the holy day, and he was born under a Nim tree. So he was given the name Nimai because Sachimata had already lost eight children previously. So the, the, the ladies were worried that maybe she will lose this child also. So we want to protect this child. So we'll give him the name Nimai because the Nim tree is antiseptic. The Nim tree will protect people also from evil spirits like ghosts and so on. They will not come near the Nim tree. So they thought we will give him the name Nimai and this will protect him. But then they also wanted to give another, they gave the name Vishwambar, the maintainer of the universe. Based on the astrological conclusions of Nalambar Chakravarti, they gave the name Vishwambar, the maintainer of the universe. So he was given these names, Nimai and Vishwambar. And then the ladies, they, they, the ladies, they were seeing when the child was a baby, how whenever he would cry, they would have to chant the holy name. They would chant the holy name. And when they started to chant the holy name, um, the baby would stop crying and begin to smile and laugh. And so the ladies would enjoy this. The baby would cry and the ladies would look at each other. Oh, we better chant again. We want to stop this baby crying. And then the ladies would all begin kirtan again. Immediately Nimai would be smiling and laughing. And the ladies would all laugh at each other. 
oh, this child is very naughty. So in this way, the ladies also called the child as Goranga, Nimai, Vishwamba, and they were enjoying his childhood activities. So from the beginning of his life, there was chanting of the holy name. Even as a baby, he was chanting the holy name. Later on, when he grew up, even after his marriage, Chaitanya Charitamrita describes how uh, at one point he had gone off to uh, East Bengal. We are here in West Bengal, but East Bengal, in, of course, in the times of Mahaprabhu, it was all Bengal, but still there was West and East. There was no border as such, but there's still West and East. So Mahaprabhu would go over to what is now Bangladesh to do some teaching and preaching and to earn some of, something for maintaining the family. Because he married and he has an elderly mother, so he has to maintain his family. So he went to travel and teach. But when he went to travel into Bangladesh there in East Bengal, he didn't just only speak philosophy, but he also taught the Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. And Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, this is the work of the preacher. That preaching is not just for only speaking philosophy and debating with scholars. That's all right, you can do that. But what is really essential in preaching is to establish the Sankirtan movement. And there ha we want to also teach people the importance of the chanting of the holy name and have nice kirtan. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, even it, while he was in family life and going to East Bengal, he was doing Sankirtan and having people chant the holy name. It's described, it was at, at that time, while he was in East Bengal, he met with Tapana Mishra. Tapana Mishra was a learned scholar. He'd been reading lots of books, but he could not understand what is the aim of life. And now, there are many people like that. And Srila Prabhupada also writes in his purports, he said, you'll find many people, they have many books and they've hardly read any of them. Yeah, they have, oh, I have all the books. Have you read them? Oh, well, well, I'm going to read them one day. But when? We don't know. So Tapana Mishra was a bit in that condition. He was a learned person, he studied a lot, but he did not know what is the goal of life. And he, somehow he had a dream, and in his dream he was told to approach Nimai Pandit. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, a, at the time as a young man, as a teacher, he was known as Nimai Pandit. And Tapana Mishra came to him and told, and he, because in this dream he'd been told, you should go to this Nimai Pandit, that he's a great personality. He can guide you. So he came to see Nimai Pandit. Now Nimai Pandit was just a teenager at this time. You have to understand the activities of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He became a teacher when he was 11 years old. Do you know any teachers who are 11 years old? It's not very common. This is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He studied everything and he learned everything and he opened his own school and became a teacher. And he had hundreds of students. Many, many students came to him. So he went to East Bengal, Tapana Mishra came to him and surrendered to him while he was still a young man. 
Tapana Mishra was older. So at that time, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told Tapana Mishra that you should go to Varanasi. In the future, I will come there. That is an indication that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu knew that in the future he is going to take sannyas and go there to Varanasi. Otherwise, how would he, why would he tell Tapanamishra, you go to Varanasi, I will come there? Mahaprabhu knew that, now usually, you know, he's a householder, he's a teacher, he wouldn't go to Varanasi to teach. He wouldn't go there. But, as a sannyasi, he could go there. So, he told Tapanamishra, you go there, I'll meet you there. And he did, Tapanamishra had so much faith in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that when Mahaprabhu told him that, he left everything in East Bengal and he went all the way to Varanasi and he stayed in Varanasi until Mahaprabhu came there. And of course the son of Tapana Mishra was Raghunath Bhatta Goswami. He became one of the Goswamis, surrendered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young child, performed many wonderful activities in the home of Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata. Just like Lord Krishna's childhood is divided into three stages. You have the Bala, you have the Poganda, and then you have the uh, Yo, uh, not Yovana, but uh, Kaishor, yeah, Kaishor, Kishor, so Kishor. So Mahaprabhu's Lila is also like that. After Kishor, then it's Yovana, youth. Kishor is young boy, like 10 to 15. And Bala is first five years, and Poganda is five to 10. And then 11 to 15 is Kishore, and after that, Yovana. And so Mahaprabhu, like his Lila is like that. You have his Bala Lila, first five years as a child in the home of Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata. And there's some interesting pastimes took place at that time. One particular pastime was when a Brahmana came there to the home of Sachimata and Jagannath Mishra to stay there. Somehow Jagannath Mishra had invited the Brahmana to come. The Vedic culture was like that, that people would bring Brahmanas, mendicants, if they saw some mendicant, they would invite them, come to my home and take your meals. They will feel blessed to be able to feed someone to give food to a brahmana, they would feel, people would feel very happy to do this service. Today it's not so common, but in the past it was very much the culture. So Satchimata and Jagannath Mishra, they, bought, they brought this brahmana to their home and the brahmana had his deity and he said, I have to cook for my deity. I, I, I cook myself for my deity and then I have to offer to the deity. So Tachimata and Jagannath Mishra said, very good, no problem, we will make all arrangements, we will provide everything you need, you can cook for your deity. That's a, a nice thing to do. Brahmanas, some Brahmanas, they do that, like to cook for themselves. Uh, sometimes you will see all the brahmanas, they each cooking, like 10, 20 brahmanas all sitting and each one has a little fire and each one is cooking. They, they all like to cook for themselves rather than to take the food cooked by others. They will cook for themselves. So this brahmana, he had a habit to cook for his gopal deity. So the Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata provided everything for his cooking and he cooked 
and then he got ready to offer and he sat down to chant the mantra to invite the Lord to eat and as he was chanting the mantra suddenly Nimai appeared and at this time Nimai is just just a toddler he's just crawling but he came there and he crawled and he began to eat the food which the Brahmana was offering to the deity. So when, the, when Nimai began to eat the food, then the Brahmana saw that, oh no, oh this child, he has ruined my offering. Oh no. And Jagannath Mishra and Sachimara, they came running and they saw Nimai standing there eating. And they said, oh, oh, we're so sorry. Our child has ruined your offering. Oh, where's, oh, Nimai, you shouldn't, oh, Nimai, you're very naughty. Oh, they, they, they chastised the child and they, they pleaded with the Brahmana that we're so sorry this has happened. Do you, do you, would you like to, would you be willing to cook again? So the Brahmana thought, well, well, all right, I guess I'll have to cook again. So then the, they, br they brought more provisions and again the Brahmana began to cook. And he cooked and cooked and got everything ready and again he's making the offering and again when he's chanting the mantra, calling the Lord to come and eat, again Nimai appears and begins to eat. And the Brahmana is just, um, oh no, not again. Oh, this child is too much. Oh, he's ruined my offering again. And Jagannath Mishra and Mother Sachi come running. Oh, and they see what's happened and they apologize. Oh, we're so sorry. Our child is giving you so, oh, how Nimai, how you could do this. Oh, it's not good. The Brahmana won't, the Brahmanas will curse us that we brought him to our house to eat. So then the Brahmana, they thought what to do. The Brahmana thought maybe I'm supposed to fast today. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to eat. But Jagannath Mishra and Sachi Mata, they pleaded and pleaded with them. You please, cool. we, will, we will put Nimai to sleep. It, it's getting dark now. Night is already coming. If you cook, again, just wait a little longer. Nimai is going to sleep. and we'll, When we sleep, then you can cook. That time you'll cook. Nobody will disturb you. So the Brahmana thought, um, well, all right. He waited and he Every, everything became very quiet, became dark, everyone was asleep and so the Brahmana again began to cook and again it's cooking and after the cooking then again he makes the offering and again when he makes the offering and invites the Lord to come and eat he looks up and to his amazement there is Nimai eating the offering again. And this time Nimai came forward and spoke to the Brahmana and said to him, what are you worried about? You're calling me to eat. Why are you objecting? You're, you're calling me. You're chanting the mantra. You're calling me to eat. Why are you complaining? And Nimai told the Brahmana, you should know that previously I was the son of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj and at that time you were also a Brahmana and you came as a guest to their home and we had the same activity, the same pastime took place there in their home. And so Nimai then also told the Brahmana that don't tell anyone about this, just keep this very confidential. Don't, you don't want to tell anyone about this. This is not for everyone to know. But I'm telling you just to pacify your mind. So we may wonder if 
Nimai told the Brahmana, don't tell anyone. How did this pastime come to be recorded in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? How did Krishna Das Kaviraj know? How could he know it took place? Because Nimai said, don't tell anyone. So how did, Nim how did Krishna Das Kaviraj know about it? You should understand Krishna Das Kaviraj is also enlightened by the grace of the Lord that these pastimes are revealed to the pure devotees by the grace of the Lord. Just like Vrindavan Das Thakur, he also describes the same pastime in more detail than it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And Vrindavan Das Thakur is Vyasadeva. He's the Vyasadeva of Chaitanya Lila. And so Srila Vyasadeva knows everything about Krishna and he can record it all in the pastimes. So similarly this Krishna Das Kaviraj, he has also described this pastime, revealing the activities of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a young child. Another interesting pastime which took place when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was still a young child was he, he, he sat on the, on the pots, the different pots which are used for cooking. Just like at Jagannath Puri today, wherever they cook, they always cook in earthen pots. They won't cook in the same pot again. They use earthen pots and then they have a new earthen pot. And the pot will be taken and given to the, the, the devotees. They can relish the prasadam. So in the times of Mahaprabhu, all these earthen pots would be there at, outside the home. There would be like a, a pit where they would put the used pots whatever left over after cooking and the pots would be thrown away into a pit. So at one point somehow Nimai went and sat on the pit. He sat in the pit on, those, on these pots. The Sachimata asked him, what are you doing there? You're the son of a Brahmana. You get contaminated in that place. Lord Chaitanya said, contamination? He said, what's the difference? He said, it's all Krishna's energy, it's all the energy of the Lord. Why is there any difference? There's no difference, it's all one. It's all one, it's all the same. He said, we eat food, we eat food, the food is a transformation of the earth, and the pots, they're also a transformation of the earth. So what is the difference if I eat the pot or if I eat the earth or if I eat your sweets? And Sachimata looked at him and sh she was shocked to hear her son speak this Mayavada philosophy. But Sachimata herself, being a great devotee, she could defeat this argument of her son. And she said to Nimai, she said that, look here, when we have the pot, when we have the earth in the form of a pot, we can use it to store water. He said, she said, if I just have a lump of earth, a lump of, I pour water on a lump of earth, the water won't be stored, it will just run away, it will just run everywhere. But when the earth is made into the form of a pot, then it can be used to store water. In the same way, if you eat earth, you will not be healthy. You will get disease, you will get sick. But if you eat food, your body will be nourished and you will be healthy. So when Nimai heard this philosophy from his mother, he was convinced and he said to his mother, he said, why didn't you tell me this philosophy before? 
He said, I'm never going to eat earth again after hearing this. From now on, I'm just going to drink the milk from your breasts. That's the best food for me. In this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was performing his pastimes with Mother Sachi. He wanted to reveal to all of us the glory of the Krishna conscious philosophy. We don't want to eat earth. It's not all one, right? There is a difference. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's doctrine, of course. Achintya ved abeda tattva. Everything is simultaneously one and different, inconceivably. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu propagated this philosophy, this doctrine to everyone. And even in his childhood, he was teaching this to his own parents by his different pastimes. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the age of five, then he was, his education was going on and he was immediately learning everything. Everything which was taught to him, he could immediately master without any difficulty. He could learn all the rules of grammar. He learned everything very nicely. And therefore, by the age of 11, he was ready to become a teacher himself. And he opened his own school. So being a teacher, he would meet with many people. And one of the people, one of the persons who he met, one of the persons who he met, the important pastimes which took place in the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, was when Keshava Kashmiri came there to Navadvip. That Keshava Kashmiri came into Navadvip declaring himself as Digvijay, the conqueror of everywhere. He claimed that he could defeat everyone. He defeated everyone. And indeed when he came to Navadweep, all of the other pundits, they all ran away. They didn't want to be there because they knew if they had to meet with Keshava Kashmiri, they, could be, they would easily be defeated by him. And once they're defeated, then they no longer have any credit as a teacher and they will not be able to attract any students. So many of the pundits, they all closed their schools and they disappeared. They said, oh, I have to go home, I have to go and see my family, I have some urgent work. Actually, they were all just avoiding meeting with Keshava Kashmiri. But Nimai Pandit was there and he was not running away, he was not afraid of anyone. He was sitting on the bank of the Ganga with all of his students and he was teaching. And it was in that condition, he was sitting teaching, when Keshava Kashmiri came along the bank of the Ganga. And Keshava Kashmiri came in a big procession with many followers. And he was riding on a big elephant. So he was really, you know, putting on a big show and people were really afraid and they were really, he was attracting a lot of attention and he thought, he was known to be a great devotee of Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning. Now Mother Saraswati is worshipped by students today, not only students, dramatic arts, people who are in acting or musicians and so on, they will worship Mother Saraswati to get her blessings. So Keshava Kashmiri, he was a great devotee of the goddess Saraswati. And he would do Saraswati Puja every day. And he was depending on goddess Saraswati's blessings in his debates. And up until he met Nimai Pandit, he had always been victorious. But when he came into Navadweep, he met Nimai Pandit and he, he, somehow he had heard that, oh, you're Nimai Pandit. 
Oh, I've heard about you. Yeah, you are, you are a, a logician. You know the, 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 you know nyaya, you know logic. And in this way, Keshava Kashmiri uh, opened up conversation with Nimai Pandit and uh, he wanted to uh, debate with Nimai Pandit. But Nimai Pandit requested this Keshava Kashmiri that could, would you like to compose some poetry in glorification of Mother Ganga? So at the request of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Keshava Kashmiri then began to recite verses. And it's described that he recited verses just like the blowing wind. He could recite poetry, he could make up a verse, a poetic verse, just like the wind, very easily, very quickly. And in this way he composed many verses glorifying Mother Ganga. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu listened to his poetry and said, Oh yes, you, you're very learned, you have, you have a, lot of, a lot of ability. He said, you've done very nicely, you've composed many poems, but, you know, there's some faults in your poetry also. There are some good things, good qualities, some embellishments are there, but there's some faults as well. Are you aware of that? Do you know there's some faults in your poetry? And Keshava Kashmiri was shocked because he thought, in my poetry, there can be no fault. There, there's never any fault in my poetry. But Nimai Pandit said, well, look at this verse. And Nimai Pandit then quoted a verse from uh, Kesh, which Keshava Kashmiri had recited. He, he re, Nimai Pandit recited it and he said, you know, within this verse, there are some good qualities, but there's also faults. There are five faults. So Keshava Kashmiri was completely astounded. He had never heard anybody ever criticize any of his poetry or any of his statements. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, no, look at this verse. And Mahaprabhu recited the verse. So Keshava Kashmiri was surprised. He said, he said, you know, he said, I recited those verses like the blowing wind. How could you memorize this verse? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said to him, he said, well, just like you had the ability to recite so many verses, somehow I have the ability to remember verses. And I've remembered this verse which you've recited and I found faults in it. There are faults in it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went, then went on to list the different faults, the, good, the faults which were there within the verse, how there was some repetition and redundancy, and there was some rasa basa, different mistakes were made in the verse. And, but then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, but there's also good qualities there. There's, and, he, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then went on to describe the good qualities in the verse. So Keshava Kashmiri was just listening to Nimai speak and he was just totally devastated. He'd never, he'd never been defeated like this. And all the students of Nimai Pandit, they were laughing. And they were laughing at Keshava Kashmiri. They were thinking, see, our teacher defeated you. You thought you were Digvijay, but our teachers defeated you. You're nothing in front of our teacher. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then corrected this, his students and he told them, no, no, don't laugh. Don't laugh. He is a learned person. He's a very great personality. He's a learned scholar. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he defeated K 
Keshava Kashmiri. He was very respectful to him. So that night, Keshava Kashmiri worshipped Mother Saraswati and he requested Mother Saraswati that, have I offended you? Did I do something wrong to offend you? You let this young boy defeat me. I was, I was supposed to be the big champion and this young boy has defeated me. He hum humiliated me. Have I made some offense against you, Mother Saraswati, that you did not allow me to display my full intelligence against this young boy? But Mother Saraswati then spoke to Keshava Kashmiri and told him, you should understand that this young boy is no ordinary young man, but he is my Lord and Master. And he is my worshipful Lord. So when Keshav Kashmiri heard this from Goddess Saraswati, then he understood the identity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he came the next morning and he fell at the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he surrendered to him. Later on, he went on also to become a Vaishnava. So this is one of the important pastimes which took place during the childhood of Mahaprabhu. While he is still a young man, he defeated this Keshava Kashmiri, who was supposed to be Digvijay, the conqueror of everyone, everywhere. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu perform many wonderful pastimes at home. One of the things which happened was he told his mother, my dear mother, on a codice, do not eat any grains. That's an interesting instruction which came from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that is also, of course, an instruction which we follow in our Krishna consciousness movement today. It stated in the scriptures that you should not eat grains on the Akadasi day. And it said one who eats grains on the Akadasi day, then he is the killer of his spiritual teacher. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested his mother not to eat grains. This means that before he gave this instruction, his mother was already eating grains. His mother was in the habit of eating grains. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested her, please do not eat grains on a Kadasi day. And from that day on, Sachi Mata would never eat grains again on a Kadasi day. However, there's another pastime which took place when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a child, while he's still in the Bala Leela, at that time he, he, took, he took the pastime of being sick. And he, in his sickness, he requested his father, bring me the prasad, I want the Vishnu prasad. And this was on Ekadasi day. On the Ekadasi day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young child, he was crying to get the prasadam of Lord Vishnu. There were two devotees whose home was not very far away from the home of Jagannath Mishra. One was Jagadish and the other was Hiranya, two brothers. And they were worshipping the deity. Now when we worship the deity of Lord Vishnu, we offer grains on a codice. Lord Vishnu, he doesn't have to observe a codice. Lord Vishnu can eat grains on a codice day. And similarly, Gore and Nitai, they are Vishnu Tattva. So you may be worshipping Gore and Nitai. They also 
can eat grains on the Ekadasi day. We offer grains to the deities on Ekadasi. So Lord Chaitanya was a young child and he was crying and he was, he was, sick, he was having, pretending to be sick and he was demanding from his mother and father that I want the prasad from Jagadish and Haranya. I want their Vishnu prasad. So Jagannath Mishra had to go to the home. At Jagannath Mishra went to the home of Jagadish and Haranya and requested them. Could you kindly give the prasad for my son? My son wants Vishnu prasadam on the Ekadasi. So it was Ekadasi. So Jagadish and Haranya, they laughed. They thought, oh, this child is very clever. He wants Ekadasi prasad. He wants the prasadam on Ekadasi. He's taking the Vishnu prasad. Usually, we will cook for the deity and we will give we can give that Vishnu Prasad and we can give it to people who are not devotees. But those people who are devotees, they won't eat grains on the Ekadasi day. But Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did this pastime. He took the grains on the Ekadasi day just for a lila pastime with his father and mother, playing some trick with them. Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata were always puzzled about the identity of their child. Sometimes they would hear ankle bells, but there were no ankle bells on the ankles of Lord Chaitanya, on their child. He didn't have ankle bracelets, but they could hear the ankle bells. They were puzzled. And then sometimes they would see also the lotus footprints. In the lo in the, on the footprints of the child, they'd see all the different auspicious markings which are there on the soul of the Supreme Lord. The different markings which are on the feet, like the fish and the thunderbolt and the instrument for herding elephants and the lotus flower. All of these different markings are there on the soul of the personality of Godhead. And Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata, they could see all of these things. They could see these their things. Where did these footprints come from? How did they, what are these footprints? Where are they from? In this way they were puzzled. They could not think of their child as being God. They could only think of their child as being their son. Even though he performed so many divine pastimes, they could only think of him as their child. Nimai Pandit would do many mischie mischievous things. When he, as he grew up to be a young boy, he became more and more mischievous. Those of you who have children, who bring up children, you know that, right? When, when the child's just young, you can hold them in your arms, but once they start crawling and moving around, they become more and more mischievous. So Nimai became very mischievous. And as he grew up, one of the things which he did was he teased the young girls. The young girls were all coming to the Ganga to bathe, and they would bring different sweetmeats and flowers and sandalwood to offer to devas when they would come after taking their bath they'd do their puja. So Nimai would come to that place and he would see the girls bringing all their sweet meats and things and he would approach them and he would say to them you should offer these things to me you should worship me don't you know all the goddesses, Mother Saraswati and Lakshmi, they worship me. Even Lord Shiva worships me. You should also worship me. So the girls would look at Nimai and they would, they would just laugh and they'd think, come on, we're not going to worship you. They, wouldn't, they, they, they didn't take him very seriously. But then Nimai began to speak to the girls and he said, if you worship me, then I will bless you that 
you will have a good husband who has a lot of wealth and from your husband you will have many sons and your sons will all be intelligent and handsome like your husband. I will give you this blessing. But the girls, some of them ran away and when they ran away, Nimai Pandit said to them, if you run away from me, then I will curse you that you will get a husband who has four co-wives and I will curse you that you will have to live with this husband who is nasty and irritable and always complains to you. He does not satisfy you. And he has four co-wives also. You will have to live in that atmosphere. And so in this way, when the girls heard this, then he thought, maybe this Nimai has got mystic powers. We better be careful. We better do what he said. And in this way they came and they began to worship Nimai. So sometimes Nimai would go and bathe in the Ganga and people would be bathing. Sometimes people would be chanting their mantras and meditating. Nimai would come and splash water on them. Sometimes he would come and he'd dive under and grab their feet and pull their feet so that they would fall in the water. So people would sometimes complain about Nimai. They said, this son of yours, he's so mischievous, he's so naughty, he gives us so much trouble. Can't you do something about him? So they got so many complaints that Jagannath Mishra would complain to his son and tell his son, you know Nimai, you have to, be, you have to behave properly. Be a good boy, you're supposed to be the son of a Brahmana. You should behave properly. Don't offend people, don't make people angry. And Jagannath Mishra would get quite angry at him and chastise his son. And he would chastise him so much that sometimes Jagannath Mishra would have a dream. And in his dream, a Brahmana would come. And the Brahmana would say to Jagannath Mishra, he would, he would say, Jagannath Mishra, you better be more careful how you speak to your son. You should not talk to him so, so harshly. Don't chastise him so much. Don't be so harsh on him. You don't know who he is. He's not an ordinary person. And Jagannath Mishra would, in this dream, Jagannath Mishra would argue with the Brahmana and say, well, look, I'm his father. He said, even he may not be an ordinary person, but I'm his father. It's my duty to correct him. So this, this is the mood which Jagannath Mishra had with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He could only think of Mahaprabhu as his child, as his son. He could not think of him as God. Just like Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj, their mood of Vatsauya Ras is so deep and so intense, they can only see Krishna as their child. They cannot think of him as God. Even when he picks up the Govardhan Hill, Mother Yashoda thinks, Oh, my son, he couldn't do it. It must be my husband who's doing it. So the same way Jagannath Mishra and Sachimata, they simply had that same mood as Nanda and Yashoda. They simply saw Mahaprabhu as their child and they were filled with this parental affection for him. So this is the nature of the childhood Leela. So we'll stop here. We'll ask if there are any questions. Any question, any comment, anyone? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble, respectful obeisances. Thanks for the nectarian pastimes, the childhood pastimes of Mahaprabhu. You were talking about the advent of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by the prayers of Srila Dvaita Acharya. I will, my question is on the confidential reasons of his appearance. 
uh, where in chaitanya charitamrita it is mentioned that lord appeared for two reasons one is to enjoy the mellows and the other is to provocate the devotional service so on enjoying the mellows there are various preachers whom i have come across in our moment who say that the lord doesn't know the mellows what radharani enjoyed and that's why he came to enjoy the mellows but we also see that there, there are six opulences in which the lord is full which is explained by shila prasaramuni so without the knowledge the lord is fully knowledgeable so my question is how come the lord doesn't know because shila prabhu very clearly mentioned i've read all across his lectures where he says he came to enjoy the past times i have two questions mara this is my first question could you please clarify <laughs> yeah quite an interesting question you have quite a, an involved question mahaprabhu came to enjoy the past time to enjoy the mellows and you're bringing up the point that he came he wants to experience the mood of radha that mood which shrimati radharani has which she enjoys in her loving relationship with lord krishna well certainly in the chaitanya charitamrita it does describe the thinking of the lord that it mentions there that the lord is thinking that shrimati radharani's pleasure is thousands of times greater than my pleasure and i i i want to be i'm the enjoyer i'm supposed to be the supreme enjoyer but we see that shrimati radharani's pleasure is infinitely many more times greater than my pleasure so i want to taste that pleasure so your question is is mahaprabhu enjoying or is he coming to learn how to enjoy well certainly we do feel we, we do see that he has the, he desires to cultivate that radha bhav and sometimes i have heard it said that he would regularly associate with gadar her pandit because in the association of gadar her pandit he could understand more what is the mood of shrimati radharani and so mahaprabhu is bhagavan he has all opulences and so he you you say that he should know everything he should know so what he we could say that he knows that the pleasure of radha is greater than his pleasure and so he knows that much and therefore he is anxious to experience that kind of pleasure which she is having and thank that's one reason that's why he comes thank you maharaj my next question is uh, related to mahaprabhu being a shruti dar he could hear and he could remember everything but this this question is related to currently with the knowledge we have it's very difficult to remember everything and anything and particularly people also give this excuse i am aging so my memory is losing so one constant prayer even at the time of death just one prayer how to remember is my question about the lord means nothing one prayer to remember at the time of death how we can have that memory is my question how we can have that memory well we see like madhavendra puri at the time of death madhavendra puri was reciting that verse the famous verse which is the words of shrimati radharani a dina dayadra natahe mathura nata no like that you know that verse from the chaitanya it's stated in the chaitanya charitamrita is that madhavendra puri was reciting that verse again and again at the time of death and he was also helped by ishwara puri ishwara puri was his disciple and ishwara puri was with him and serving him and helping him to remember the lord in the past times of the lord so good association is important as well 
at the time of death, at the end of life, you want to be in the right association. You want to be, um, we saw Srila Prabhupada at the last moment, he just wanted the holy name. He just wanted the holy name. I had the experience myself. I, was, I, we, I went to chant with another devotee in Juhu temple. Prabhupada was there just before he went to Vrindavan. The last time he'd come back from the UK and he was in Juhu and he was resting there. He wanted us to come and chant. So we were, two, we were going in twos and we would sit and, we'd sit and chant. So we were chanting Hare Krishna mantra. And at one point, the devotee who I was with, he, he started to chant Govinda Jai Jai. And immediately Prabhupada opened his eyes. He said, just Hare Krishna. It, it was one instruction I got from Prabhupada. You know, not really, my, but the, not me, but the devotee who was with me. But very clear, Prabhupada just wanted Hare Krishna. He didn't even want to hear Govinda Jai Jai. So, that was uh, Srila Prabhupada, the final lesson. Hare Krishna hmm. Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Sorry? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Under the name tree, Nimai has borrowed. Uh, there is, uh, the name tree is a, a very bitter test with uh, antiphagocytic and antiphagocytic and antibacterial agent. For this reason, uh, there are ma many lak lak trees in the world uh, 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 as antiphagocytic and antibacterial activity uh, Nima has borne that place is a reason. Thank you. We'll just get a, a translation, I think. Srinivas Prabhu, yeah? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, Prabhu is asking there, uh, why Lord Chaitanya appeared under the name tree? Why Lord Chaitanya appeared under the name tree? So he could have the nice name Nimai. Right? He's under the name tree. And so that's how he got the na a name, the name Nimai. One, and one more question. Nimai, and the name tree was, we said, was also antiseptic. And so, you know, keep away the, the evil spirits. At the time of giving birth, you don't want evil spirits around. And so the Nim tree was there. It was giving shelter and protection from the evil and inauspiciousness. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, even Prabhu is asking question. Uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was l leading Kirtan or doing Kirtan in Sriva Sangan, what Kirtan they used to do? do? Is it Hare Krishna Mahamantra or some other? Well, Prabhupada said this Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Yadavaya Madhavaya Kishva. He said this was a favorite of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this was one of the kirtans Mahaprabhu was doing. Hare Harai Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha Gopal Govindaram Sri Madhusudan. Those two lines. Gopal Govindaram Sri Madhusudan. Later on, Naratam Daslakur added more lines, but the, those first, those two lines, that was what Mahaprabhu used to sing. 
And that was a favorite of Mahaprabhu. That's why Prabhupada said, especially here in Mayapur, we have to sing that when we do kirtan. And every morning Mongol Arti they're supposed to sing the Okay, Maharaj. Okay. Any other question? Maharaj, the whole pastime of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is based on, as you have said, that there are two diaries of uh, Murari Gupta and Swarup Damodar. Swarup Damodar Goswami. So my uh, question is, uh, I, I also heard that during Bhakti Gunath's time, uh, the, the copy of Chaitanya Chaitanya was very difficult to find out. Of course, now we are having so many copies of Chaitanya Chaitanya. So the point is that, um, is it, is, is these two diaries, are they available at present? That, that is my question. Are the two diaries available? Yes, it must be available somewhere. Copies, I mean something, uh, ed, maybe, edi, maybe ed, edited versions or whatever. But without the, those diaries, those books could not be compiled. So somewhere these diaries must be, some kind of copy must be there. These diaries were, had been, huh? you know, Hare Krishna. the Chaitanya Charitamrita <coughs> and Chaitanya Bhagavad, they were written after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has appeared. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had already left the world. So these diaries, then they came, they were there. So they, they must be somewhere. Maybe like you could go to Vrindavan Research Institute there in Vrindavan and see what they have. I think it's mentioned that they are available. Prabhupada mentions in a purport that they are available, these diaries. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, this, I think Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's childhood, Vishwarup, he left his house and took sannyas later on. What is the role and this influence of Vishwarup on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Well, there is one pastime mentioned there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita where it said Lord Chaitanya had a dream and in the dream he saw he met his older brother Vishwarup and his brother was telling him come and take sannyas come with me and take sannyas but at that time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said no he said no I have to take care of the family I have the old, my elderly mother here I have to take care of the family and Mahaprabhu actually told Sachimata about this, that I had a dream and in the dream my brother was there. And, but I told him I would stay here. I wanted to stay my, my, with the, the family here and take care of the family. And so what influence did Vishwarup have on Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Well, I said he, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did use that excuse to say he was going to look for him, he wanted to find him. He didn't actually find him, they didn't meet again. But we see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did follow somehow in the footsteps of his brother, he took sannyas. Then after he took sannyas, when Sachimada came there to Shantipur, and when she saw him as a sannyasi, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to his mother, he said, Oh, I did it in the spur of a moment. I did it, uh, you know, spontaneously. I didn't think about it. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to his mother, I'll come home. I'll come home with you now if you want. And I'll, I'll just come back and be at home. But his mother said, No, 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 no. And he said, Now you've taken sannyas, you must keep that vow. You must keep your vow. He said, if you come home, that will be worse than leaving home. At least you've taken sannyas, that's honorable. But if you come home after taking sannyas, that will be dishonorable. So in this way, Mahaprabhu never gave up his sannyas. 
So that was one pastime. All right, so it's getting late. We have to stop here now. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, thank you, Maharaj, for your wonderful uh, narrations of the Lord's pastimes. So, we all thank with by chanting three times Hari Bol to Maharaj. Hari Bol! Jore! Thank you. So, Abnara Jara Ekhane Boshe Achan, those who are here, for them, Prasadam coupon will be given at the gate. Please collect that coupon and uh, enjoy the Prasadam. And you, will, you can inform your uh, friends, uh, devotees, whoever it may be, all are welcome here for this Shravanotsav and enjoy uh, hearing and Prasadam, having Prasadam. So, Amadir Bhakti Derke, Ar Apnadir Jana Chena, Bhakto, Bandu, Sabaike Bolben, Yeshavano Savoche, Ekonjara Bairi Jaben, O Kupan Dia Hoche, Kupan Nie, Prasad Grohan Korben. Hare Krishna. Dhanavad Apnadirke. As an evening, Bikel Vela. Pansta Samay Shuru Hobe Pansta Ae Bikel Vela Pansta Ae Shuru Hobe Prabhupad Shishra Debe Class Bikel Vela Dujan Ache So evening we have uh, Prabhupad Disciples in the evening session 5 o'clock Bhajan Kirtan will start So please be on time 